This is a perfume bottle. Let's take an image with my iPhone. Upload it to ChatGPT. Use a reference image. Type the prompt, and boom, there you have it. Within seconds. If that's not crazy, I don't know what is. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about AI, image generation to be specific. How to use it, if it's good or bad, and how is it affecting the photography industry already? This is going to be a super exciting video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. What's fascinating is this image is taken by an iPhone. There's no external lighting that's being used. The image quality isn't that great. There's noise. The image is not super sharp. The subject and the background separation is not there. But still, the AI is able to understand what the subject is and convert it into a final result. And it's not just selecting the subject and placing it in place of the original subject. Even that would have been pretty impressive. It is actually changing the orientation of the subject. It has changed the lighting as well, and then it has given you the final result. When I saw it for the first time, my mind was literally blown. Not only can I recreate the reference image, I can simply ask ChatGPT to add some fire and smoke in the background. And look at this. Not only did it add fire in the background, even the wooden foreground is illuminated more as it should be because of the fire. And the whole image, including the subject, is now warmer. If I tell it to add snow, it adds it but makes the image cooler. Yes, the text might not be super consistent, but that can be easily fixed. The reason why the iPhone image quality did not matter in the first place is because it actually doesn't use the original image to create the final result. It uses the original image to understand what the image is about, but the final image is created from scratch, pixel by pixel. So it doesn't matter even if it was shot with an expensive camera, the result would still be pretty similar. I have a hard disk right here. It's quite rugged. So let's go for something like create a dramatic product photograph of this lacy hard disk as it crashes onto a rock with dust flying in the air, focusing on its rugged build quality. Seriously, this looks amazing. The dust particles look real. And if you see closely, you will see the shadow of the dust particles on the object. The light is coming from right to left and hence the right part is illuminated and the shadows which are darker are on the left hand side. Honestly, if I would have seen this image somewhere on social media, I would not have been able to tell that this is AI generated. It's not 100% perfect all the times. There are times where it gets the logo or the text a bit wrong. But if the subject is fairly simple, it does a great job. If you're wondering which model I'm using, I'm using ChatGPT 4.0, the latest image generation model till date. And image generation is not something new in the world of AI. We saw first glimpses of it when Midjourney got released. Fast forward to today, the images look so good, it's almost impossible to differentiate between real images and AI. The techie in me finds it super fascinating. I mean, come on, you have to agree. The way it understands what the image is about, the way it generates an image from scratch is pretty cool. But the photographer inside me finds it really, really concerning. You can literally pick any image on the internet and create a copy of it. The photographer might have spent years mastering his or her work and you can duplicate it just within seconds. This feels morally wrong. And whether something's right or wrong, it's kind of a subjective opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. I would be interested to know what's your take on this. How photographers can take advantage of this particular tool is let's say you have an image of the product. You can create different prototypes. This will help you to visualize your mood boards faster. If you like what you see, you can spend the time, money and resources to execute it. The question that always has been in people's mind is, is the photography industry going to be affected? The unfortunate truth is it's already getting affected maybe on a smaller scale as of now. Imagine you're the owner of a small brand and you want product photos for your social media, but you don't have the budget to hire a professional product photographer or a graphic designer, but you can simply create images using ChatGPT for a fraction of a cost. ChatGPT monthly subscription costs $20. That's nothing in comparison to what a professional photographer would charge. If you want to make any changes, you can simply type a prompt and generate the image rather than spending hours perfecting the setup. AI has its limitations. It is not perfect like in the examples we saw before. It doesn't provide you with the same level of precision that a professional product photographer would provide. However, based on the improvements we have seen in the last few months, 
I would not be surprised if it reaches there very soon. That being said, a photograph is much more than just a bunch of pixels. There's value to real images. A good example is the Windows 10 wallpaper. This could have been easily recreated with some 3D software. However, it wasn't. They actually used real glass panels, fired lasers through them and added smoke and photographed the result. And that is what makes it iconic. Same with cars as well. Let's take for example Rolls-Royce. Machine can build cars, but Rolls-Royce is hand assembled, is hand painted and that is what makes it a piece of art. Similarly, will people value real images more than digitally created ones? Well, only time will tell. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's it from this video guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got to learn something from it. If you did, press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.